Hi everyone, and welcome to this special video on 2025 design trends. I'm Roy, a product marketing manager here at Elementor, and today we're gonna dive deep into the trends that are shaping the future of web design. To share her expert insights into this topic and tell us about the cultural shifts that are driving these trends, let's welcome our very own designer, elementarist, and content creator, Celine. Hello. Hello, Roy. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah, me too. All right, so let's get started. Let's get started. First up, let's talk about micro-interactions. So, Celine, what should visitors expect to see when we talk about micro-interactions? Here we're talking about subtle animations or responses to user actions, actually, like a button changing color or transforming in size when you hover over them. We can talk about like tooltips that open on colorful links, scroll animations that stand out. But what makes those micro interactions really stand out is when they're applied only to few elements, basically, or one or two sections. Because the most important part is that we don't want to overwhelm the users. Yes. It's just we, we want to delight them, right? We can add like delicate fading or sliding animations or visuals. So I it's mean, kind of like to add this like personality into your into your design. Exactly, exactly. They all add personality and interactivity to your website. Okay, but what makes micro interactions so popular this year? Why are they culturally significant? So micro interactions give visitors feedback to their actions, you know, and make designs more lively. They're all about making the digital experience feel more intuitive and human. With users spending so much time online, they're browsing like a lot of a lot of websites. Yeah. And when they see those kind of like small, delightful animations, they really stand out. It really makes the browsing memorable and enjoyable. Culturally, they reflect our need for the instant feedback, basically. Whether it's a form submission or navigating a menu, user expect an acknowledgement of their actions, basically. That's a very good point. And actually, there are tons of Elementor features that can help you create these interactions. You can use entrance animations and motion effects to add dynamic movement to elements. Hover effects and stylings, which you can add to every widget, either through their styling options or transform features, making any element interactive. Lottie animations or animated headlines to create playful, responsive designs triggered by scroll, click, or hover. And the hotspot widget, where you can open tooltips using triggers on images. Next, we have a trend that's all about bold colors, pixel art, glitch effects. I'm talking about retro style because once in a while, we all need a little bit of that nostalgic feeling, right? Right, and it's fun. It's a fun throwback to the 80s, 90s, and even early 2000s, you know? Elements like neon lights, glitch effects, and outdated tech references like pixelated art, pixelated fonts, handwritten fonts, and hand-drawn illustrations even. I love it. But what actually makes retro design such a hit right now? Actually, retro style taps into our collective nostalgia, which has been like a big cultural driver for like since forever, actually. But like, let's take a look for Y2K for a second. Think about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it might feel like two years ago for some of us, but it's actually a part of our nostalgia since it was like 25 years ago right now. Yeah. So this style is a reaction to overly polished designs. People want something that feels a bit raw, playful and imperfect to relate and connect. It's also heavily influenced by the resurgence of retro aesthetics in fashion, music and the pop culture, actually. So we can see a lot of bold typography, gradients and pixelation. That makes sense. I mean, it's always comforting to, you know, go back in time again, a little trip down memory lane. Yeah, don't we all want that? Of course and you can easily capture this vibe with Elementor using custom typography controls for bold, quirky fonts, background overlays and gradients to create those retro color schemes, and CSS filters for glitch or vintage style effects. Moving on, let's talk about the exciting world of interactive 3D elements, whether it's product previewing landing pages or immersive storytelling. Celine, why are 3D elements being heavily used lately? How does it reflect on current cultural trends? So 3D elements create depth and realism that draw users in. They are especially impactful for e-commerce, websites, landing pages, and branding because they offer a more tactile and immersive experience. 
Culturally, it's part of a larger shift towards interactivity, basically. Web creators are trying to recreate this highly engaging, almost physical online experience to their brands on their websites. So 3D design has started to take over websites with the emergence of no-code platforms like Spline and rapid integration of AI to major design tools or softwares, making the production of these visuals easier to more web creators. I think it's a very exciting trend and actually you can start exploring these features right now with Elementor using our editor without any complicated coding. Using the Elementor AI image generator, you can create 3D images, edit them however you like and animate them using motion effects. By the way, I love using AI image editing tools inside Elementor, seriously. It's, it's like, so nice. It saves so much time. So much time, like you have no idea. It really does. Next, let's explore a trend that brings a lot of creativity and authenticity to web design. I'm talking about scrapbooks. Celine, what makes this trend so popular? So scrapbooking is all about embracing imperfection and creativity all together. So it uses mixed media elements, including scan textures like papers, washi tapes, and doodle illustrations, stickers, and cutout photos. We typically see them in asymmetrical layouts and layered on top of each other, which conveys a deliberate, imperfect, yet curated look. This trend gives a lot of room to add interactivity to websites, where we can play with clickable tactile elements and reveal hidden notes, for example. This is I love on yeah. hover. Culturally, it reflects our longing for analog DIY aesthetics in a digital first world, and we are craving for a creative escape from like overly polished minimalist digital designs. It gives sense of individuality and appeals to people and brands who appreciate artistic expression and craftsmanship in everyday life. Yeah, and I think it's a bit similar to retro in a way that it's nostalgic as well, right? It is, it is, but also it conveys a little bit of a feel of the mood boards. Yeah, and I love how it makes you feel like it's personal, but it's also unique and playful at the it same is. time. It is, like you get into the head of the designer, you can see that. Actually, everything that we mentioned for micro interactions and for retro style to be applied here as well, like using transform features to create custom hover effects, and you can use widgets like Hotspot, TextPath, and Flickbox to further enhance interactivity. And also, using a nested carousel widget, you can create the effect of turning pages in each slide. Okay, let's talk about a design principle that really makes a statement, bold minimalism. So we are seeing a lot of clean layouts paired with eye-catching fonts. That's simplicity with impact, and I love it. Okay, Celine, tell us how this trend resonates with modern web design. So, bold minimalism strips away distractions to focus only on the messaging, only on the content. And we can see that it uses large typography and plenty of white space. We can still use imagery, but still like staying minimal and still focus on the content of the imagery as well. Yeah. So like the minimal amounts. We can also add like subtle color accents to guide the attention of the users, but we should still focus on the content and the message itself. It's mostly like giving out the manifesto basically. Culturally, it aligns with our need of like focus and simplicity in a world where it's overloaded of, with information, basically. Exactly. It's like using one font family, but also having room to play with variable fonts. Exactly. It provides you a lot of room to play and you can create like a huge impact by using it in like big weights and, and in big sizes and then like resizing it back into like more minimal sizes. It's, it's minimal, but let, but it still lets you create it. Right, space. right, right. So like these are like text is a visual element too. Like you need to keep of your focus on that. Of course. We've seen a big jump in the usage of AI and it's revolutionizing the creative world. In web design, AI generated images and websites are leading the game. So, Celine, where do you see this the most and how can we distinguish between AI and not AI? Well, it's no debate that AI is like entered so fast in our lives and it allows for endless creativity and efficiency. Even though you don't see it, it's actually everywhere. It's everywhere. And there's still a lot of discussion about whether AI will replace designers one day or not. But yeah. personally, I don't think it will. 
because designers are going to still stand out from the crowd with their unique taste and their ability to curate the right visual or art piece for a particular theme or project. I can say that designers develop an incredible ability for self-expression and staying true to a main theme on big projects throughout their careers. Their output will always, always be different and remarkable Absolutely. and will stand out from the crowd. So culturally, this reflects our embrace for automation and customization. With AI, designs can be hyper-relevant and it can meet users' expectations to be dynamic and engaging, actually. Absolutely. And I'm a big supporter and a big user of AI. Like, you have no idea how it improved my workflow, oh, especially yeah, when too. making websites. Mine too. Like, like I, I use it to, you know, generate text and content for my websites to generate images to edit my images like i use it to like i generate a lot of images based on other images so like i can create my own collection based on an image that i really like absolutely so we love this trend yay uh... yay next up let's dive into hyper personalized interfaces websites are becoming smarter tailoring content and design to each visitor so celine i'd love to know more about your thoughts on this trend so personalization creates a deeper connection with users by adapting layouts and recommendations and content. It's all about making visitors feel seen and valued. Culturally, it reflects our expectation for unique and on-demand experiences. Think of Netflix recommendations or Spotify unwrapped content that is curated uniquely for the users based on their habits and choices throughout the year. Think of like e-commerce and content websites like People want to find what they're looking for among a vast amount of selection and they want to see whatever they're interested in and every user have different interests. So developers work harder to show relevant content for, for viewers, basically. Yeah, of course. And with Elementor, you can also make your websites hyper-personalized, for example, with dynamic content to display user-specific information or conditional logic to customize layouts based on user behavior and advanced pop-ups to deliver tailored messages or offers. Finally, let's talk about dark themes, a trend that's been around but is evolving with more customization options. So, Celine, please tell us about this. Sure, dark themes are easy on the eyes, so especially in the low-light environment, and gives websites a sleek, high-tech and modern look, basically, you know. Culturally, it reflects companies' growing focus on user comfort and control. The internet's peak hours are officially between 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. And this is the evening hours for the majority of the world. So dark themes make it easier for the eyes to adjust from dimly lit environments to screens. It reduces the eye strain and minimizes the eye fatigue. Really helpful. Yeah, I use it a lot. I mean, I think everyone does these days. Yeah. For sure. All right, so that's a wrap for our video about 2025 web design trends. Celine, thank you so much for being here. It was such a pleasure making this video together. Thank you so much for having me today. And like, before we go, I would like to remind everyone that trends come and go. But what will remain in your visitors' mind is that the experience that they're having on your website. So as long as you apply the best practices and offer a good visitor experience, um, you'll be in, in good place on your website. Basically. I guess we can say trends are tools, not rules. Exactly. Right? All right, so thanks everyone for watching. Make sure to comment here in this video what trends you're looking forward to and what trends you're currently using. You can read more about 2025 design trends in the blog post attached in this video. Happy creating and see you next time, I guess. See you next time. Happy creating in 2025. Yes.